Hello and welcome to the recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live coding session. CodeBuddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer-to-peer -peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. We've been working on the project for Western Friend. Western Friend is the official publication of Quakers in the Pacific, North Pacific, and Intermountain Yearly Meetings. Those are large groups of Quakers in Western United States. We've been migrating this website from Drupal over to Wagtail CMS, which is based on Python and Django web frameworks. The feature we're working on is for subscriptions to be able to subscribe to the magazine online. In order to do so, users have to log in or register first. We realized we needed a custom user model, and you should really do this early in a Django project so that you don't have to migrate your users later. Um, so we can take a look at how we defined a custom user model and the package we turned to. After that, we made a couple modifications to the subscription data model to link, uh, add a foreign key relationship between the user and a subscription instance, as well as adding start and end dates so that the subscription has a, it's a time period uh, in which uh, people are authorized to access the most recent um, issues of the magazine, they might also get a print or PDF uh, copy of the magazine as it's released. So without further ado, let's take a look at how we did these changes today. Um, shout out to this book actually, Two Scoops of Django, version 1.11. Django 1.11, uh, this is by Audrey and Roy Greenfield. Greenfeld, sorry. Uh, really excellent, very well written, uh, humorous, informative. It will extend your knowledge of Django beyond what's in the, the core docs. The Django documentation is really excellent al already, but um, Audrey and Roy have really compiled um, just a lot of best practices for Django development over several iterations of that book. Django 111 is long-term support, so everything in that book is going to be relevant even though we're now in Django 2 uh, land. Django 2 was released oh, a while back. I'm not sure now I'm at, I think Django 2.2. Okay, let's get back to the project. One of the things that they recommended is using a package. In order to uh, define a custom user model, there's already a package for that called auth tools. And auth tools gives you some um, predefined user models. And we used a model that uses the email address for the username. So we don't really need a username for the foreseeable future. Let's take a look at how we defined our custom user model. So the first thing we did was to create a new package, a new app in the project called accounts. And here we just created a, a model called user model. Uh, and really this model just does one thing. It inherits from the abstract email user. When you go to either log in or register now on the site, immediately, let's see, did I click that button quickly? There it goes. The forms updated, everything just worked. Email address, password, and password, no username is required anymore. It was just like, you know, three lines of code changed. Um, adding that again to our, our base settings and defining, you know, this user model, some, you know, four lines of code, really almost copy and paste, really remarkable, um, very easy to do. So the next thing we needed to do was have a better way, a more intelligent way of linking um, users to subscription instances. Right now I've got a kind of crude way where I'm looking uh, at the subscription user email and then I'm looking up a user in the database with that email. So relatively slow foreign keys are optimized already there. Um, going to be much more performant when you run that query. Let's hop over to the subscription model and take a look at how the model changed to add a link to a subscriber. So here's the subscription model and we'll get to these other uh, fields in a moment regarding the subscription start and end dates. This code really came directly from Wagtail. 
uh, I kind of copied and pasted it, but read very closely and had to do some thinking about how we want it for our project. Um, the subscription has a user associated with it. They're linked by a foreign key. So every subscription has one related user, but a user can have many subscriptions, like a whole history of subscription renewals, for example. Um, we tell it to link to the settings auth user model. So even if this uh, auth user model changes at some point, it's going to use the correct relationship and maybe the data would have to migrate. I'm not sure how it would work. Hopefully we won't have to change that user model now that we've defined it. Uh, this uh, subscription relationship is basically the user is the owner of the subscription. We might change that. So from a subscription, I can get the owner. And still in discernment whether or not we should allow subscriptions to not be linked to a user. But my intuition says no, that every subscription should be linked to a user in the database. Uh, there are people who subscribe through offline processes, like filling out a form or paying uh, the editor uh, directly via a check and only asking for a paper um, copy of the magazine, so maybe never will access the online copy, online version. But I think those subscriptions will just live in a, a spreadsheet. I don't think they'll be entered into our system. I'm making the field editable, making it editable so that um, if there's an error or if somebody subscribes and wants to hand their subscription to another person that the editor has the ability to override that. The edit widget is not super uh, elegant. Let me actually log in here. I should have showed you the back end. When I go to the admin section of the site, I go to our subscriptions table and I go ahead and edit one of these. Uh, we've got these new start and end date fields. We'll look at those in a minute. I should have showed you these previews beforehand though, but, and now we have this owner field. Now this is linking to my user account. And this is, as you probably noticed, a select menu. Um, there are potentially gonna be hundreds of uh, users on this site. So a select menu is gonna get quite crowded. Um, we'll have to see if there's a different widget we can use. This widget was automatically uh, created by Wagtail. Let me show you that in just a moment. Uh, when the user account is deleted, we want to prevent that action because that would, we don't want to delete subscription instances. We need a record of these um, from what I can tell. So we want to have a hard constraint. That way our data, we maintain data integrity. Uh, so Django lets you do that, pr protect the model. So if a user registers and they create a subscription, that user now can no longer be deleted. And from a user, we can get their subscriptions um, via this keyword. That way we can see the whole history of a user's subscription. So this is how to define, it's defined on the Django model. Let's take a look how to tell Wagtail to render it in the form. It's just one line of code. You just tell it to render a field panel uh, for the particular field, really simple. Wagtail does all the form rendering for you. It does quite a lot. So that was the main thing with the subscriptions. Uh, users. Let's also take a quick look at these start and end date, which are new fields. So while we're here, start and end dates were defined. I went too far up, I think. Here we are. Sorry about that. They're just date fields. We don't necessarily need a time. Uh, we just want to know the day that the subscription started and the day it ends. And um, I think I can do some time zone aware. Um, checking when I get to the next step, which will be to make sure a user has an active subscription uh, that has not expired in their time zone uh, in order to see the full version of the online magazine articles for the latest three issues. We'll do that in the next live coding session. So again, this is defining the fields on Django model and allowing to be them to be nullable for now. Um, just, I think this was just kind of a little bit laziness on my part. Admittedly, I didn't really know what default value to set them for uh, the previous um, ent entities, entries in the database. So maybe I'll have to retract it because really every subscription should have a start and end date for it to be useful. Again, we just tell uh, Wagtail to render field panels for that. It selects the widget automatically, a date picker. It's really nice about that. Uh, there's no constraint to make sure that these are, um, you know, a year or 
two years or three years apart, we should probably consider that um, because essentially a subscription duration is always going to be an increment of one or more years, uh, never like you know 90 days or something like that. This is a first effort, and um, Mary is also very forgiving about. Um, it's not necessarily I'm cutting a corner, but um, we just don't really know quite what you, what user experience we're after for the editing editing of this content. So this is just the MVP, the first iteration. Let's take a look now how we're calculating those fields, because in the subscribe page. The subscription form doesn't have a start or end date. It's the same subscription form. The user provides th their subscriber details, what type they want and how long it should be, as well as their contact information or mailing information. But then they proceed directly to the payment. And on the completion of the payment, the subscription is visible for three years there, and I can edit it. And if I look at 2019 to 2022, everything worked. So how does that happen? Well, we'll come down here. The subscription form just, I'm just going a little bit fast because this file is going uh, is displayed on an index page. The index page has some intro text right here that you can edit just for context and something like that. I view that live. That way the editor can put it in all sorts of details. If you look at the current subscription page, there's a lot of information on there. Um, we're trying to simplify this process, but so there's that. And then it renders this form. So that's why we need a subscription page so you can show this intro text, edit the intro text, and then render the form. Uh, this code was written in the last session, so I'm not gonna go too deeply into it. But what it does is basically renders the appropriate form, whether it's a registration form or a subscription form, based on whether or not the um, user is signed in. And then, similarly, when it gets a post request, like a form submission at that URL, it's checking whether the user is registering or if they're subscribing. And so today we edited this uh, method, uh, this function when they're subscribing, and we added a little bit of, um, uh, we, we added these fields the values into the fields that weren't present in the form submission. So specifically, we get a temporary instance of the subscription, telling it Django not to commit it to the database just yet. Then we attach the user to the subscription, and the user is available in the request. And then we use this nice um, Python library called Arrow, better dates and times for Python to get the current date and set that to the subscription start date by converting the arrow um, object to a Python date. Then we do a little bit of sort of math to set the end date, subscription end date, by taking the current date and shifting it by the subscription duration, which is a uh, number of years for the subscription duration, which is an integer value, and returning that as a date. And then it's finally saving the subscription. So by using this uh, library, we were able to have a pretty nice, um, you know, um, API, a very self-documenting way of writing the, the code. We did compare uh, a couple of other uh, daytime libraries for Python and found that Arrow has both been around for a long time since 2013 and is very um, still very actively maintained. Even the core maintainer is still around and, and contributing to it. And then the last month or two has had a very large spike of development. So that's a good sign from a, a library. We're going to go with that. 
Well, those are the main changes then today. Um, I had a great time in the um, Twitch chat, saw some familiar uh, usernames, at least not faces, and uh, had an opportunity to get off topic and just explore some other concepts. And, um, yeah, I do appreciate when people were hanging out. The session was pretty long, but it makes it a lot easier when uh, we've got you know friends there uh, to bring up interesting um, conversations. All right. Well, again, this has been a Code Buddies live coding session. Uh, if Python and Django and Wagtail aren't your thing, there are a lot of other uh, active groups on Code Buddies, uh, studying and teaching everything from Java, JavaScript, Ruby on Rails, PHP, data science, you name it. It's quite an active community. So hopefully we will see you around there on CodeBuddies.org. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.